My name is Eric Moore. I'm an ear, nose, and throat and head and neck uh, surgery physician here at the Mayo Clinic. And um, we have a great interest in, in transoral surgery, both robotically and with use of a laser and microscope uh, over a long period of time, and a, a great experience with uh, head and neck cancer of the tonsil and base of tongue, and particularly uh, human papillomavirus mediated oropharynx cancer. If we look at the number of people that are developing this type of cancer today, we're seeing it about 25% more often in patients than we were even just a few years ago. And it's expected that this is probably going to become one of the leading head and neck cancers and even surpassing things like cervical carcinoma in women that's also HPV mediated in the next few years. That's a really interesting and strange phenomenon because we just don't see big changes in cancer statistics happen that quickly traditionally here, and this is happening all over the world. And so, yeah, we think that this is going to become a very common cancer if we don't do something to prevent it, and there's studies ongoing also looking at the cancer HPV vaccine as a, as a preven potential prevention of this cancer. But if those things don't get adopted quickly or they're not effective at preventing the transmission of this virus, this is going to be a cancer that we're treating very commonly in, like I said, a very young and healthy patient population for at least the next few decades. So we started a trial because the robot was never really designed to be used in the mouth. We started a trial here where we were basically putting patients on an experimental protocol and doing the surgery, trying to figure out would we be able to complete the surgery? Would the complications be high or would we be able to keep them low? Would the patients survive the surgery? Would we run into trouble with bleeding? And then as a secondary aim were the functional and the cancer cure uh, results uh, equivalent to what we were achieving, at least with our traditional means. And we did that for um, between 2007 and, and 2010. And finally, we acquired a group of patients who had long-term, greater than two-year follow-up where we knew what their speech was like, what their swallowing was like, and we'd been following them every few months doing imaging studies and scans and exams to see if they were developing recurrence of cancer. And the study reports on 66 of those patients who'd undergone that treatment, transoral robotic surgery, with or without additional radiation therapy and chemotherapy, and what their long-term functional results of speech and swallowing were like, and what their cancer cure results were like. And we were surprised uh, somewhat that their, that their cancer cure uh, results were even better uh, than the traditional treatments that we've been doing. But that's probably almost as much of a matter of these cancers are human papillomavirus mediated for the most part, and they respond much better to treatment. Uh, and we were not surprised, but we were pleased to, to see it confirmed that their speech and swallowing results were excellent. So these patients didn't need long-term tube feeding or long-term tracheostomy. They were able to get back to their job and their life much quicker than the traditional treatments we were offering them. Not only is this story sort of um, uh, involving new technology and the way that that's influenced treatment, but at the same time that we were developing new ways to take out tumors and technology was catching up with use of robotics and use of lasers and small instrumentation, the whole cancer was also changing. So 20 years ago, we would see predominantly people with head and neck cancer of their tonsil or base of tongue having had a long history of tobacco use and a long history of alcohol use, particularly in older patients who'd had many, many years of exposure to this. And they had a lot of health problems uh, in addition to their cancer, and quite frankly, the treatment outcomes were not very good. This has been revolutionized by the um, uh, sort of advent of, of recognition that human papillomavirus is playing a big role now in these cancers. It's changed not only the cancer behavior, they tend to um, behave a lot less aggressively. They tend to be a lot more responsive to the different treatments that we have to uh, offer. But the whole patient demographic has changed too. So we see a lot younger patients, much less tobacco and alcohol abuse, much healthier patient population developing a fairly significant head and neck cancer, uh, which has really changed the way not only that we treat the disease, but how we think about these patients as far as the long-term outcomes of treatment. We now have to worry about, you know, what's going to happen to them 15 or 20 years down the road with these treatments? Are they, are they going to hold up to the treatment effects as well as the behavior of the tumor? There's a lot of interest now here and other places across the country of actually adopting this kind of treatment as the primary treatment for 
uh, base of tongue and tonsil cancer, trying to cone down on some of the heavy-handed treatments that we've been using in the past. And the, the next thing to do is a multi-institutional prospective study where patients either go to this treatment or traditional treatments and we randomize them and actually see, you know, are these results going to hold up over many years at multiple institutions. And so those studies are being planned and ongoing now. But from our standpoint, we do think that this is the ideal treatment now for patients with this kind of cancer. And for those patients who come here and don't want to be randomized into a study, this is the treatment that we offer them as our primary treatment.